now I'm walking the halls and I see students, they act, they all know each other. You feel that. And uh, that's what I brings me that sense of pride, knowing that that still exists here, that sense of community, which I believe is critical if you're truly going to get a lot out of a college career. It's more than just some fun times or some fun events. It's what you do every day that would make the difference. And, it, and, and again, it gives me a sense of pride knowing that it still exists here and that I believe it actually has gotten better. I graduated from high school and wasn't quite sure what I was going to do as far as continuing my education and decided I need to go look for college to attend. So I'm very family oriented and I just felt very welcome. Um, it was a very warm feeling here, um, definitely closer to home. I'm from East Chicago, born and raised in East Chicago, so it was an easier commute. It was, it was a good fit for me. I actually, when I started as a freshman, we were at the old location, at the Chicago location. And then I, my second semester of my freshman year, we moved here to the, uh, the Hammond location or the Whiting location. And so I was actually one of the, we were part of that class that, that when we moved here. And it was exciting because we went from storefront to this um, building here. And it was, we thought we had um, reached heaven, right? It was a big deal for us. And it was exciting. I mean, it, but it was it was different in that I thought maybe we might lose that sense of community at that time, but we didn't. It just actually got better. Um, I studied business. Um, I didn't know what to do initially. I was uh, an accounting major until my junior year, and then I met with some of my accounting teachers and my advisor. Um, that's what makes this place so great. I mean, they were so, so understanding of my concerns. I'm not sure if I wanted to be um, an accountant. And so they did some assessment on me and they says, hey, maybe you should go into business, which I did. And I graduated with a, with a degree in business in 1980. My mentor was Dr. Edward Zivich. Um, he's uh, now passed away, but he and his wife were very influential in my life. Um, Joan Zivich was the librarian at the time. And uh, Dr. Zivich just saw something in me that I guess as a kid, you know, teenager, youngster, um, we don't realize is there. And um, was very, very instrumental in pushing me on to graduate school and um, just being in you know, my corner and letting me know that, Liz, you can do this, you can do this. I wasn't quite done at grad school. I was just getting ready to graduate from Loyola. And he called me and he's like, Liz, how's it going? I said, oh, it's great, you know, getting ready for graduation. And he says, well, you know, I need a teacher and I'm wondering if you can help find an adjunct faculty member for me. And I was thinking of one of my good girlfriends that I would drive up to Loyola with and she had some teaching experience. And I said, well, you know, maybe I can talk to her and see. He's like, oh, no, no, I'm looking to see if you'd like to come. And I'm like, oh, what? Um, I said, I'm not quite sure that I'm ready to do something like that. He goes, oh, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. I want you to come in my office and you know, I'm going to give you the textbook and we're going to talk about it. And, and I'm telling you, he mentored me. And since 1991, I've been teaching here at Cal College. So it was sort of like helping him out because he had helped me so much. And I have been here ever since. I was counting it up today. It was, it's been 31 years, my connection to CCSJ. <laughs> and probably a little longer since I was here for the four years. So as a student and then as a faculty member. I was a senior at Bishop Nell Institute, um, and I recall, didn't think about college. Back then, um, th there was a lot of opportunity to, to work. Um, a lot of my friends were, were either going to the service or going to work. And at that time, um, industry manufacturing was a big deal, and, and you could make a lot of money doing that very thing. Uh, I come from a family of steel workers. Um, I, I thought, well, maybe that's what I'll do. Um, it was great work. My dad was encouraging me to, to look at, uh, at uh, to follow his footsteps. But it was actually a history teacher at Bishop No who told me, you know, you're really good at this sort of thing. She says, I see that you're, you enjoy learning, you enjoy writing, you enjoy reading. Has anyone ever told you that you're college material? And that's all I needed. Um, I, 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 was really flattered by that, but I was also intrigued. And so I stayed after class and I asked her if, if she meant what she said, and she said she did. And then she indicated to me, she says, you should really think about 
looking at Calumet College of St. Joseph, you know, and back then it was Calumet College and, and I says, really? And she says, yes. Um, she says, that'd be perfect for you. She says, I think you would thrive in that environment. She says, but again, that's just my recommendation that you make up your, your mind. She says, go down to the, the guidance office and, and make an appointment, and which I did. And um, the director of guidance at that time said, I think that's an excellent choice for you. Um, I toured um, uh, the campus at the time. It was not that far away from Bishop Now. It was still in East Chicago at that time. And um, fell in love with it immediately. Um, and I said, this is where I'm going to go. I applied other places as well, but this was my first choice. And, and that's the reason why I decided to come here. And I had brother, I had a brother and sisters who followed me. So um, that, it was uh, Brother Kelly McCow, St. Joseph family. It really opened my eyes to opportunity and to be able to lead the way for others coming through. Um, my parents didn't graduate from college. My parents didn't even graduate high school. For somebody like me to come through and be able to accomplish that and get through grad school, it was almost as though, wow, it created and allowed for uh, me to grow and to see how I could lead others um, you know, come, to, to come through and to influence them and to encourage them, uh, just as Dr. Zivich did for me. Everyone here knew each other, including the faculty. The, the faculty knew my name, and I knew their name, um, that we could rub elbows in the student lounge. Um, they could play games with us. Back then, it was a lot of um, ping pong games, and, um, pocket billiards, and um, pinball machines, and we would have food sales, and movie nights and it, it, it was all one community. The faculty weren't separate from the students. We all knew each other and that's, that's something that stayed with me. For me, that was, that was very important. And um, you know, to this day, I still remember um, a lot of the faculty who taught here and, and um, the impression and the impact they made on my life and how I looked at others and how I looked at myself and how I looked at the world. And they, they helped me better understand it and accept it um, instead of trying to, um, they didn't put their views, impose their views on, my, on me. They wanted me to come up with my own views and then defend it. Um, and that's something that I believe that's what Calumet McConnell St. Joseph is really good at. They, they, they truly want their students to learn in an open environment, safe environment, an environment where that, that that Catholic teaching is all about. And that's the reason why um, I thrived in this, in this environment. You know, a lot of our, our students, they know they need an education, but they're not sure about who they are inside. And I think CCSJ helps them to look at that. It gives them the opportunity to step back and take a look and, and grow and, and come into who they might be and who they are. Um, one of the, one, the best things I love about CCSJ is our, our Catholic identity piece. You know, um, I helped our students to recognize that they have a purpose. You know, they, this is just one step in the road, you know, in their future, in their lives. So they have that purpose and we try to bring that out, you know, through um, discernment and helping them do that introspection. So um, I am hoping with all of this growth that we're gonna be able to reach more students and in that, way of helping them to grow, to be able to get out there, learn who they are, and get out there and help others. So it's, it's a neat opportunity, I really think so. My current position right now, I serve as chancellor for Ivy Tech Community College, Lake County campus. Being the chancellor, it's, 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 a, it's a busy job, it's a demanding job, but a lot what I learned here as a student, <clears throat> I've now applied in my current role as chancellor. And I, I make it a point to interact not only with faculty and staff, but I've made it a point to interact with students. And uh, before the pandemic, I would, I, you know, I would interact with students uh, very similar to what, how faculty and staff interacted here when I was a student. You know, walking down the halls, talking to people, hanging out at the student lounge, or you know, um, if there's a food truck was in, then I would just go and just buy, buy tacos for everyone or pizza for everyone. And, and we sit at the picnic benches and get to know each other, right? It's not just our, you know, mantra, oh, you belong. You really do. If you step in here and you allow us that ability to get to know you, you know, we're going to be friends for life.
you'll have a place for life. And I tell my students that as well. You know, but just because you graduate, you've got something that, you know, an issue or, or a concern while you're helping a, a patient or you're helping one of your clients, call me, we can figure this out. It's not just office hours, but my students already know that they can get a hold of Professor Guzman from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. You could email me or text me, and I will get back with you in an hour, and they know that. So, yeah, uh, I do try to mentor a lot of them. Um, you know, my first year, I, um, I did okay um, in, in my studies, but I remember um, a director of financial aid who became um, one of my mentors would get on me up, um, simply because he felt that I was um, a student lounge rat, where I was just living there all the time, skipping class. And I often wondered how he knew that I was missing class. Um, well, it was my, um, some of my accounting teachers and econ teachers that would go and tell him that I was skipping class. And so he made it a point to, um, to go down and look for me. And then he would always um, find me either by the pinball machines or by the pool tables. And he was, um, I didn't know this, he was a pool shark. And so um, he played against me and then he whooped me pretty good. And, um, <laughs> and the bet was that I would go to class and he beat me. So, <laughs> so um, and so that's how I got to go back to class. And um, he stayed on me the entire time until I graduated. Um, and we would have tournaments, ping pong tournaments, um, pinball machine tournaments, pool tournaments. And it was a lot of fun and being an underclassman I never thought that we could beat um, the seniors, and then it wasn't until my senior year that um, that I won the pool tournament, and um, that was, it was it meant a lot to me. Even to this day, I actually still have a trophy, which I'll show you in a second. Um, it's a simple trophy, nothing nothing really fancy. Um, it's uh, you know I I have um, I've been recognized in my career for a number of things. Um, but this is the one trophy that I still cherish. It is not because I won the pool tournament. It's because of the memories that, that were created in that student lounge. It was that sense of community that, that we created down in that student lounge. And, and, and to this day, when I still run into um, classmates, uh, they will remind me, hey, Lou, you remember when you won that pool tournament? And, and we talked about all the things that led up to that, right? And, what we didn't, we don't. What we don't talk about is all the years that we got beat. Um, but um, but we learn how to um, to lose uh, with class, and um, but we learn um, because of that, right? And we learn how to work with others, right? But it was it was competitive, but at the same time it was fun, it was fair, right? That's the was that's the environment that that that, that was here and that it was embedded in the student lounge. It's just amazing to come full circle. Um, as a student, I could remember my very first religion class in room, what is it, 204? Um, and then um, coming full circle to teach and then taking over the department. Uh, that's kind of nutty. <laughs> I read my bio and it's just like, who is this? <laughs> who is this? So I think, you know, what it says is that with opportunity, um, with uh, the ability to grow with collaboration and mentoring, um, all of which I received here at CCSJ. Um, the sky is the limit as to what we can do. Um, I have worked at many um, hospitals at, as a medical social worker from Rush Presbyterian to Porter Memorial. Um, I've headed up programs for Franciscan. Um, I have done a lot of social services in my time all of which I have enjoyed. Um, and I'm really, um, I, I love teaching. I love leading the way for um, newer students and those that are interested in helping others. Cause I'm not gonna be here forever. Um, and I need to open those doors because um, our clients need help. Our clients need help, so. And I'm very proud of my students that want to work. I have them wanting to work with children, to uh, families that are broken, to um, the elderly. It's hard to get young students wanting to work with the elderly, but they do, and, and they're there. So um, I just take it as my responsibility to lead the way to help them to do that. Um, I'm a donor, and I, I donate because I truly believe in the cause and the mission, the vision um, here at Cayman College St. Joseph. But for donors and also potential donors, um, I believe many donate because they want to make an impact on people's lives. 
I, I don't know of a donor who, who doesn't want that. You want to get a return on your investment, I should say? Consider Calumet College St. Joseph. Here, you will, leaders are being identified, developed, created, and it gives them a sense of purpose. So you may not see that return on that investment the year that you donate, but you, I can assure you, you'll see that don't, you'll see that return years later. The individuals who are CEOs of non-for-profits or banks, or businesses, can't tell you how many people I've run into who are who either taking classes here or are graduates of Calumet College St. Joseph. And um, they bring a different type of flavor to the community because it is, it's rooted in, in, in spirituality and faith. And so they bring that dimension to everyday life. And so that's the sort of thing that I would, I would appeal to donors. If you would want that type of spirituality, that type of impact, invest in Calumet College St. Joseph.